Hello all, in this lesson we're going to be preparing for our Unit 8 exam on properties of solutions. So let's start by answering number 1, which compound is insoluble in water? So for this question we need table F, and the way we use it is we go through the answer choices, we look at the anion first, and we see where the anion is in the list. So for example, um, we've got sulfate here um, in as an anion, and if we look at sulfates on table F, you'll find them here, down here um, in the soluble list. But the barium is one of the listed exceptions. So there's an exception barium, which means that it is not soluble. And that would be our answer for this question, insoluble. Next up, at room temperature, the solubility of which solute in water would be most affected by a change in pressure? So pressure really only affects the solubility of gases, so the best answer for this one is carbon dioxide. Next up. Which ion, when combined with chloride ions, would form an insoluble substance in water? So a chloride ion is an example of a halide ion, which you'll see here. So it would always be soluble unless it's combined with silver, lead 2, or dimercury 1. So that means our best answer here is going to be lead 2. Next up, according to your reference tables, which substance forms an unsaturated solution when 80 grams of the substance is dissolved in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius? So we're going to use table G for this question, and I'm going to go to the 10 degrees Celsius line right here, and I'm going to move up until I can hit the 80 grams mark. Let me make a mark here. Now the question asks us to choose the substance that would be unsaturated at this point, and I think the obvious answer choice is Ki, and the reason for that is because Ki's saturation line is way up here, which is far, far, far above this, um, this coordinate, so that means it's unsaturated at that temperature. Okay, so as the pressure on a gas confined above a liquid increases, the solubility of the gas would actually also increase. So you put more pressure on a gas, it's, going, its solubility is going to increase. A solute is added to water and a portion of the solute remains undissolved. When equilibrium between the dissolved and undissolved solute is reached, the solution must be blank. So um, if some of it remains undissolved, that is a hint that you have a saturated solution um, right here. But also, when they use the word equilibrium, that's also a hint that you have a saturated solution. So my answer for this one is saturated. Number seven looks like it may be a table G question. And it states that a solution of 35 grams of KNO3, so I'm going to find that coordinate here, 35. Um, dissolved in 100 grams of water at 40 Celsius. So I'm looking for a 40 and 35. It's going to be right there. And I'm going to highlight the K and O3 line just to show you what we're looking at here. And I wanted to point out that this coordinate is below the saturation line for K and O3. It's this far below. So if I want to figure out how much more would have to be added to make it saturated, I'm really thinking about the difference between 35 and, what's that? It looks like about 65. So I think the difference is about 30, and my answer choice would have to be um, 30 grams, choice one. And in number eight, we get to use the molarity equation from table T. How many total moles of KNO3 must be dissolved in water to make one and a half liters of a two, in, two molar solution? So table T gives me this equation for molarity, and I'm ultimately being charged with the number of moles. I need to figure out the number of moles. So let me isolate this. I'll start with circling it just to draw my attention, and I think what's being done to the moles right now, and at the moment it looks like it's being divided by liters. So if I'm able to multiply both sides by liters, then I'll be able to cancel the liters on the right side, and I'll get a new equation, moles is molarity times liters. So from here, I can plug in my values. The molarity was stated as 2 molar, and the liters were 1.5. So if I multiply those two together, 
I'm going to get three moles, which is why my answer is choice three. And in number nine, um, they're basically asking for the definition of molarity, and that is going to be moles of solute per liter of solution, just like we did in the question right before this. Number 10. If you had 0 0.025 grams of lead nitrate dissolved in 100 grams of water, what would be the concentration in parts per million? So the way you solve this is also an equation from table T, and it's the parts per million equation. You just do the mass of the part over the mass of the whole times a million. I'm going to plug in the values that I know because they're asking me to do parts per million and it's already set up that way. So the mass of the part is 0 0.025 grams. Just took it right here from the equation. And the mass of the whole is going to be all the mass of the water plus the mass of the solute, technically. So the mass of the water is going to be 100 grams, and you can add a 0 0.025 if you want to be a goody two-shoes, like me. And we wouldn't stop there. We have to multiply by a million. So my answer was not exactly 250, but with significant figures and rounding, it's going to be about 250 parts per million. So choice three is my final answer. Number 11, what's the concentration of a solution in parts per million if 0 0.02 grams of sodium phosphate is dissolved in 1,000 grams of water? So I'm working off the equation that I have already written up here, but I'm just going to go ahead and plug in values and save some time. So I'm going to have 0 0.02 grams as the mass of my part, and the mass of the whole is going to be basically 1,000, but also plus 0 0.02 grams. And I'll multiply that by a million. And I'm getting 19.99, which is basically 20 parts per million. So choice one is my answer. Number 12. Uh, this one looks like it's going to be about the colligative effect. And the colligative effect states that the more moles of something you have dissolved in solution, the lower the freezing point and the higher the boiling point. So let me actually finish reading the question. Compared to the freezing point of one molar KCl, the freezing point of one molar CaCl2 at standard pressure would be blank. So the KCl is going to produce two moles of dissolved particles. And I say that because it's going to produce one mole of K and one mole of Cl. But the CaCl2 is going to produce three moles of dissolved particles. That's because you're going to get a mole of the calcium ions plus two moles of the chloride ions. So this one has more moles, which means the colligative effect would be larger. And when the colligative effect is larger, you're going to get lower freezing points and higher boiling points. So the freezing point of one molar CaCl2 would be lower. And in number 13, we're asked to compare this one this concentration to this concentration, but it's going to be about boiling points and freezing points. This guy is higher, so it's going to have a stronger colligative effect, and they are asking me about this one. So this one would have the larger colligative effect, which would mean it would have a higher boiling point and a lower freezing point. So choice two is my answer. So number 14 is about boiling at 50 degrees Celsius, so we're going to need table H. So as you know, boiling only occurs if the vapor pressure of the substance is equal to or higher than the atmospheric pressure. And um, in this question, they're doing something a little bit backwards. They're telling you that 50 degrees Celsius and water is like a set point, so you can find that point now for water at 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, it looks like it's going to have specifically that pressure. And that pressure is, if I'm reading it correctly, maybe about 12 kilopascals. And so that means that um, the only way that water could boil at that temperature is if the atmospheric pressure were 12 kilopascals, um, which is gonna be our answer. But just, you know, for reference, uh, 101.3 kilopascals is the standard atmospheric pressure. So this would be a very, very artificial pressure. Um, you'd have to reduce the pressure artificially using a vacuum. 
All right, what's the molarity of a solution of NaOH if two liters of the solution contains four, molar, four moles of NaOH? So molarity is moles over liters, and we are looking for molarity, so we don't need to rearrange. But we know that we have four moles of NaOH, so I'll go ahead and plug that in. And it's going to be in two liters of solution. So that means our molarity is two molar. For number 16... It says an aqueous solution of sodium chloride is best classified as, and the best answer here would be a homogeneous mixture. For 17, according to reference table G, which solution is saturated at 30 degrees Celsius? So I'm going to highlight the line for KCl03 for your help, and I'll point out that at 30 degrees Celsius, um, which is this line right here, you'll reach saturation for KClO3 at, um, what is that, 12 grams? So you can get 12 grams in to saturate it. And that's why the best answer for this one is going to be choice one. Last question on this page. According to reference table H, what's the vapor pressure of propanone at 45? So I highlighted the propanone line, and when we go up to 45 degrees Celsius, it's right there, and the vapor pressure would be um, 70? 70 kilopascals. Okay, as the temperature of a liquid increases, its vapor pressure would, of course, increase. According to reference table F, which substance is most soluble? So if you go through these first three choices, you'll find that they're all insoluble according to table F. But if you look at the last choice, you'll look at carbonate first. Carbonate is generally insoluble, but not all hope is lost. Check for exceptions. And carbonate in this case is bonded to ammonium, and there's ammonium as an exception to the insoluble rule, which means, of course, that ammonium carbonate would be considered soluble. And it would also be our answer being the most soluble of the four choices. So for 21, which solution has the lowest freezing point? I think that essentially they're asking us here which one has the greatest colligative effect. It would be the same if they asked us for the highest boiling point. And the greatest colligative effect, assuming that you have equal aqueous concentrations, is going to be the one that has the most ions dissolved in water. So because this guy is covalent, and this guy is covalent, and this guy is covalent, the answer has to be this one, because it's going to be, it's going to produce one mole of sodium and one mole of chloride, bringing the total dissolved moles to two moles rather than one. So the best answer is choice four. For number 22, what's the molarity of a solution containing 20 grams of NaOH in 500 mils of solution? This one is about eight different shades of tricky, so let me walk you through it. So molarity is moles per liter, but they didn't give me moles, nor did they give me liters. I'm going to have to do two separate conversions for this one. So in order to go from mass to moles, we're going to need a gram formula mass and a conversion pyramid. So here's my conversion pyramid, and it's telling me that if I want to solve for moles, then really you should cover up the moles and you can get your equation from what's left. So we're gonna to need to do grams over grams per mole to find the number of moles. And the grams, as they said, were 20 grams of NaOH. And for NaOH, we're gonna to need to, to do the gram formula mass as well. Sodium is 23 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole. And hydrogen is, of course, one gram per mole. So in total, this is going to be 40 grams per mole for the sodium hydroxide. And 20 over 40 is 0 0.5, or half. So you have half of a mole. We're almost there. We just need to convert the milliliters into liters. So one thing you may not know is that there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So if you're trying to go from 500 milliliters to liters, you can just divide by 1,000. So 500 divided by 1,000 is also 0.5.
So if you have 0 0.5 over 0 0.5, you actually get the number 1. So this is a 1 molar solution. Choice 1 is the best answer. Okay, 23. Good, there's no math. It says the solubility of KClO3, which is a solid in water, increases as the temperature of the solution increases. So you just need to know that solubility for a solid increases as temperature increases. So for 24, carbon dioxide is most soluble in water under which conditions? So unlike solids, gases are most soluble when the temperature is low. So I'm going to take out choice 2 and I'm going to take out choice 4 because they both use the term high temperature. Um, but addition, in addition to that, gases also respond to changes in pressure. So you can increase the solubility of a gas by pressurizing the gas over the liquid as well. So my favorite answer here would be the high pressure, low temperature one, choice one. And lastly, based on reference table F, which of the following compounds would be least soluble in water? So I went through the first three answer choices and I was able to find that they were all either soluble or they had exceptions to the insoluble rule. So the best answer is going to be lead chromate because you can find chromates here in the insoluble list and then lead does not appear in the exceptions to that rule, so lead chromate is insoluble, and that's my final answer. I hope this um, review sheet helped you guys to prepare for the exam, and um, yeah, study hard, do some extra studying aside from this, and I really hope that I can get an average test score of 85 from you guys. Uh, have a good night. Thanks for watching.